Right, you guys asked me to make more videos about my training and what I do. So this week we're talking about strength and conditioning and how to get back into the gym if you've had a bit of time off. Now you guys know I've been lifting all the way through the summer. So this video is all about helping cyclists get started back in the gym with a focus on strength and endurance training. And before anybody asks, I'm a qualified personal trainer to NASAM level four, and also I have my strength and conditioning qualifications. I'm gonna talk about why your warm ups should not be on a treadmill, rower, or bike, why tempo, range of motion of your lift is important, and why going too slow may be making you sore. Why light to moderate weight is a good starting point to building your strength and condition so you can condition the joints, tendons and muscles to lift heavier later on. And if you stick around, I'll talk about how to progress your training to the next step to make sure that you are stronger and getting faster on your bikes. Actually, let's just talk about why strength training for me is not just about making me stronger and faster on the bike. Yeah, the science shows that it helps improve your power output. It makes you more efficient on your bike. It makes you more economical, which means you can ride your bike for longer, for less effort, faster, conserve energy, and it makes you a better endurance cyclist. Strength training has been shown that it can improve your lactate threshold independently of your VO2 max. All these things are fantastic for being a better cyclist, a machine on your bike. But for me, strength training goes much deeper than this. We know for every decade of our lives, if we don't train it, we can lose as much muscle and strength that's anywhere between about two and 5%. And we know that your muscle mass is a direct indicator and marker of your own health and your cognitive health. The good news is that lifting weights can actually mitigate this age-related decline. We know that strength training improves bone density, which if you're just a pure cyclist, then your bones are as brittle as a crunchy bar. Above all the performance and health gains, there's a real payoff from strength training and it makes you look and feel and move way younger. So at 52, I'm almost 53. I'm in pretty good shape right now. And I don't intend for that to change anytime soon. In fact, if you watch my last video, you'll know that over the winter months this year, I'm going to switch up my strength and conditioning to make sure that I am in better shape next year than I was this. Right, let's hit the gym. Now I can't guarantee I'll be able to film as the way that I want to because let's face it, people get in the way and there could be like really loud music in the background kicking off. So I will do my best. Now, if I can't film it in the way that I want to, I will film the exercises and I'll do some talk overs on the overlays. But first, let's get a pre-workout in so we're getting really strong and building muscle. No, I'm, I'm joking. These things are rubbish. Rather sadly, the gym was super busy. So look, let's do a warm up and a proper one at that. Movement-based warm-ups are by far the best way to prime the body. It gets you hot and it's a great way to make sure that your tendons and muscles are ready to start lifting heavier later on. So reps and sets, I generally do three sets of 20 repetitions on everything that you're watching now. And yes, I'm chucking in some core work because anytime you can get that in is absolutely a big bonus. Whether you're doing squats or leg press, you want to spend time under tension. So three seconds on the downward phase and three seconds on the way up. I see so many people rushing this and doing a one-one tempo. It seems a bit pointless to me. You're just swinging through the exercise. Sets and reps are three sets of 20 repetitions with 60 seconds recovery in between. Top tip, take your shoes off you're doing squats and leg press to create a stable platform. Weight selection does not need to be super heavy to start with. The goal of each set is to complete it where well, you find it tough, but not uber heavy. That really is important to get across. Remember, it's about execution of great movement. In your rest periods, you don't need to just stand around. You can do some ab work. This is a great way to cut down the total time of your session. Upper body work is crucial to make sure that you can stay strong on your bike. Plus it makes you look good in a t-shirt. 
I like to use machines which are unilaterally driven so you can use them independently from right hand to left hand. And often you see me working between press and pull. So again, I'm cutting down the amount of time I'm stuck in the gym and I'm being as effective as I possibly can. Again, the sets and reps are 20 reps with three sets and my rest period in between is 60 seconds. I love doing this as an abs exercise. It's cable crossovers and it works you in a transverse plane. It's great for working the lower back, upper and lower core, plus your obliques, and it's gonna keep you very strong on your bike, very centered, plus, I'm not gonna lie to you, it makes you look good when your shirt's off. Okay, so let's wrap this up. You don't need to be super sexy with your training. I think a lot of people worry that they need to be doing things like deadlifts and squats. Yes, okay, in this video I've done squats, but you don't need to do that. You can get strong using fixed path machines like leg press, bench press, seated row, wide grip row. They are just as good. A key point to get across is when you're strength training, you wanna make sure you're working on a good range of motion and working at a tempo that's not too fast. But bear in mind that if you work on a very slow tempo on the downward phase or knee strengthening phase of a squat, for instance, that can cause a lot of muscle tearing, which is why when people get back in the gym and they lift too slow, they can actually experience quite a severe amount of DOMS. Let's cap off and talk about how to progress your strength training after six week phase, let's say, of doing strength and endurance, where you should be super conditioned. You can switch things on the head a little bit and start focusing on lifting heavier. And what this means is you're gonna have more sets, so about five sets, you're gonna decrease your repetitions between six and eight, and also your weight's gonna increase. And this cool thing, you don't need to change your exercises, you just keep them the same, you're just changing the modality. But I'm always gonna to say to you, focus on the quality of your lift and the range of motion. Righty, so that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, got something from it, do me a favor, hit like. If you've got any questions, shove them in the comments box below. And I'll tell you what, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Cheers.